Bonjour. <laughs> I'm too tired, everyone. That was Bonjour. a really intimate bonjour. <laughs> bonjour, everyone. It's Friday. I'm tired. Welcome to Cafe Day, Renee. Jonah, Renee, how you doing? So much enthusiasm by my co-host, everyone. <laughs> that felt like Lorna. our ASMR, James. I'm doing good. We're here on the cafe. We're live. Live, pal. Well, we're waiting for our guest. He's being fashionably late. Hopefully, he's not pulling a Paul London on us. But uh, we figured we'd start on time and uh, let's get through some some headlines while we wait for our guest. James? Wake up! Yeah. <laughs> Stop drinking, James. I need a drink. Uh, need a drink. Uh, you know Popeye with spinach? <laughs> yeah. I like a Valco Barney Gumbo. Um... Yeah, so you messaged me, was it yesterday morning, this morning? Uh, old Vincent Kennedy McMahon, he's settled one case. So former, was she the first WWF uh, female referee? Um, was, yeah. Yeah, uh, read her Charlatan, am I pronouncing that right? Chatterton. Chatterton, my mistake. Read her Chatterton. So, um, yeah, um, we've got a guest. <laughs> Oh, nice. oh well, is he showed up? Yeah, is we'll he hold here? that. We'll hold Ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, if my co-host can quit drinking. <laughs> oh, <Yo>. my God. <laughs> hey, what's up, dude? The one, the only, <laughs> Hitman Chris Cage. Yeah. AKA, what do they call you? Kalen Croft? Yeah, yeah, right? And I know, uh, Kalen Croft, depending on... Uh, where you where we knew people, right? <laughs> it's Chris, yeah, you know me as Hitman, which That's I right. like. <laughs> Christopher Pavone is his, yeah, the, his the professional name names. now. What are you doing now, bud? Are you a school teacher? Last I heard. Yeah, so I um after so after I left WWE, I became uh like, like I got out totally and um became yeah became a school teacher, elementary school. Did that for nine years and then um in 2018 i started life coaching and like i really didn't know what i was doing and then in 2019 I, was, I i took it you know real serious and started really learning like the business side of it and so that's what i do now um full time so yeah, it's if, pretty cool if someone were to tell me 20 years ago that hitman chris cage would be a school teacher i'd say <laughs> Quit drinking, like I tell my co-host every week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, I know, dude. It's it's, it's funny how. Um, in fact, there, uh, I just behind me. There's a plaque. It was a Tampa Bay Times newspaper article from the ring to the classroom. <laughs> wow, well, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's tell everybody about your career and how we met. Um, so I I moved to Kentucky in 2002, and I believe you were there along with. Uh, Magnus who became Muhammad Hassan and Johnny Jeter. Yeah. And uh, I think we hit it off right away. I mean, we're all relatively in the same age group. And uh, mm -hmm. I have a lot of great times and memories with uh, with Chris. So um, let's tell everybody, like, how you started your career. Like, you you are from Ohio, right? Correct. Yeah. And um, and James and Jonah, is it right? You're good to hey. me. Hi, Chris. What's up? Yeah, these are just the guys. Let's call them guys. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna so, sit yeah. back and listen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just keep it running. Yeah, that's um. But yeah, that's correct. So, so it's funny, Renee. I remember. So when you got signed, yeah, it was two thousand two. You were eighteen, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I remember. Um. So just yeah, a little background. Well, to answer your question, then. So like the way, the way I broke into wrestling was uh, yeah, ever you know, childhood dream. Twelve years old, wanted to be a WWF wrestler, and uh, uh, then. In the high school, you know, it's funny, um, you know, teaching elementary school, for example, or even middle school, you know, four, three, four, five years is, is a galaxy of difference, you know, if you're 12 to 17. Um, right. So I mentioned that because when I was 12 years old, one wanted to be a pro wrestler. But when I was 17, you know, still wanted to do it. So, you know, just different psych psyche and, you know, we're different, right? We've grown up some and um, – so I started taking it really seriously. It's the reason I started training. And um, so my plan was to like right after high school, man, I'm, I'm going to start, um, I'm going to start training. 
And uh, like Renee mentioned, yeah, I'm from Ohio, Northeast Ohio, Youngstown, Ohio. And um, yeah, that, that was what I wanted to do. And like, I was, I'm going to start training, but I, I knew enough about the business. This is like 1998, 99, you know, to know like you got to go to a decent place to get trained. And, and um, so the deal I made with my parents, they, they saw now, you know, that I was really serious about this. So they was like, they said, all right, you know, uh, just stay in school. You got to go to college, but you can do whatever you want with wrestling. We'll be supportive of it. Um, so I went to the local university, Youngstown State University. And, uh, you know, what do you want to major in? I don't know. I'm an artist. I'll major in art. I actually got an art scholarship. But I was like, dude, wrestling is like my thing. Like, that's my main focus. That's all I want to do. And so, um, and I had a job at the Youngstown Country Club. I mentioned that because the, the only thing stopping me from up and moving to any part in the country where there was like a really good wrestling school was, uh, you know, I, I, I had to go to college and work during the week. So um, I set out to find, you know, a training, a place that would train me that fit with my, you know, work and school schedule. And um, I mean, I couldn't find anything. You know, I, I remember checking out Maryland Championship Wrestling. I was like, that'd be cool. It's a four hour car ride. Um, but they met like during the week. So that wasn't going to work. Um, I went to a school in Cincinnati which is like a four and a half hour drive from my house. And uh, same thing, you know, and, and I would drive to these places and like spend the night and like, you know, check them out. Um, then I remember I found a place in Cleveland. I don't even remember the name, but it was like, it, it, they didn't even have a ring. Guys were sitting around smoking. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to come here. And uh, it took like, it took three years. Finally, um, I heard about Ohio Valley wrestling that I'd never heard of, which was weird. Cause I was like, you know, super fan and, um, read all like PWI and all that. And, uh, they had a beginner's class that met on the weekends. And and then I was like, yo, this place is, this is a place to go because, um, they're a WWF developmental territory, which I didn't even know was a thing back then. Right. Um, and so, uh, but then that was a six hour car ride one way, but I was like, man, um, you know, this is the only opportunity I have. So I'm going to run with it. And, uh, so I started driving down there every weekend and, um, uh so that's how i got started and yeah it was um and then i'll just say you know my first day i kind of stood out because um you know i'm not the biggest guy um but you know i was in shape and, and uh not like pretty much everyone else in there was like looked like they'd never been in a, in a gym before <laughs> um not everybody but like most so um and you know i think there's a principle there where it's like you, you show up you you you, you do something, you, you work at it. It's like the right people will notice. And uh, Nick Dinsmore was the trainer at the beginner's class. You know, it was Eugene. And uh, he saw what I was doing, driving all that way. And like within um, uh, within a, a couple of weeks, he let me stay with him. So I would get like a hotel. And uh, so that was cool. Then I started, you know, we started watching tape and, and all that. And so then I started like learning about psychology and, you know, stuff out of the ring. So Kind of from the beginning, Nick would bring me with him to the OVW spot shows and like, you know, it's like Brock, this, this one, Brock Lesnar, like Orton, uh, you know, all these guys are, you know, I'm with, I'm on these like shows with these guys, you know, in Seymour, Indiana. And, um, you know, I'm like, you know, Nick's trainee, but it was, it was really, you know, obviously great experience. And uh, so I was kind of around like from the, be from my time, very beginning of my time in OVW um, and, uh, and then we started getting used on TV, and it was a it was a developmental territory. But Jip Cornette would use guys without contracts, and um, and then that's around the time when I remember hearing, "Hey, WWE signed this eighteen year old kid," and um, I just remember hearing that it was Renee. Um, and I remember my first impression when, when I heard eighteen, I pictured like a like a you know young looking guy, like body wise. Anyway, <laughs> I met Renee. I was like, "Wow, dude." It's Jack. He's a <laughs> grown ass man. That was my that was my first impression. Um, yeah, we got different water supply up here in Eastern <laughs> Canada, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but to Renee's point, yeah, we, we we you know we became buddies pretty quick. You, you know, and it was uh, right, you know, around the same age, and uh, yeah, man, lots of good times. You know, lots of good <laughs> times. So, what what point did you actually move to uh, Louisville full time? Yeah, um, so I was coming down on the weekends, and um, and shortly after I started, maybe four or five months, Johnny Jeter came, 
yeah. and then Mark Magnus, who Renee mentioned. And um, so myself and Jeter and Mark, they um, we were like the three kind of standout guys in that beginners class. And and uh, um, so th they kind of started getting used on TV, which was a big deal then, you know, because WWF developmental, you know, television show and the OVW show was always really good. And um, I remember thinking, man, I got to get down there. So anyway, I, I Cornette actually told me, he's like, look, he's like, just finish school. You have like a year left. He's like, we're not going anywhere, you know. And so I, I graduated in December of 02 and then didn't even walk in my college ceremony. I mean, you didn't need to. They mailed me my diploma and uh, we did, I was at the TV taping that Sunday because um, we did it on Sunday that week because it was Christmas or something that week. So mm -hmm. December, like December of 02, I moved on officially. Right. Yeah. So did you, because you were roommates with both Magnus and Jeter, right? Or did you? Yeah. Uh, over the, uh, yeah, a couple, Magnus and Jeter, yeah. And then um, later, Chris Masters. And there's a handful of roommates. Right. <laughs> I remember because I moved into the same apartment complex as you, and you were rooming with uh, Joy Mercury. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, oh yeah, that, that was a few years later. That was a little later. That was Mallard Crossing. Mallard Crossing. I think, <laughs> yeah, dude. Were you signed by that point? I think, you, when did you officially sign your first developmental contract? Yeah, I, um, uh, I got signed in November of 2003. So, November um, 2003. Uh, yeah. I remember That's being awesome. happy finding out that I think Jeter was first, then it was yeah. you, then Magnus, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, Jeter got signed in like uh, like April or something. Right. And, and um, yeah, then me and Magnus got signed together with Tank Tolan and uh, Julian Hall, and then these two guys we never met before, Bobby Lashley and, and Nick Nemeth. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I remember the first time I seen Bobby Lashley, I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy's a specimen. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So uh, I was talking with Jeter. He wants me. He wants to know. If you can tell me the story about skinny dipping at the blonde haired girl's house in Louisville. Dude, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you, you so do you remember that? I don't think I was there, but I remember hearing a story, but please elaborate. So um actually you you were there. You were like dating the girl whose house it was or something. I was geez. <laughs> <laughs> we're not dating. I think maybe y'all just hooking up. Hooked it. up? Uh, that's yeah. possible. I, I many, think uh, it's possible I'm remembering. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> possible I'm remembering it wrong. But um, so yeah. Uh, now I don't know what Gina remembers back. So I remember um, we went over there, and I'm pretty sure you were with the girl you were seeing. It was me, Gina, and this other girl, and. Uh, we were both trying to get with the other girl, and she wanted Jeter actually. Um, and, I, and I was trying to make the moves on her, <laughs> and so I kind of cock blocked Jeter, <laughs> which is how I remember. It's, it's, I don't know if that's what he remembers. <laughs> and uh, and then I ended up seeing her like two years later, and um, out at a club, and then she was like down to like hook up or whatever. And then her friend stepped in and was like, "No way." Oh, I hate when that happens, dude. Yeah, comma. Yeah. yeah. Was it was it like an overweight friend? I honestly don't remember, but pro probably. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you also wanted me to ask you about Dyersburg, Tennessee, at the fairgrounds. You have any good memories there? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's the other thing I was going to mention um, about uh, like when me, Jeter, and Magnus were in the beginners class. So like Nick. Um, Nick got us booked because again, he saw like we had some talent and like, okay, these guys really want it. So yeah, the fairgrounds, um, which is where TNA ended up getting started. Like not too long after that. Right. That was a great place to work. It was Burt Prentice, um, late 2001. Cause and there was a lot of like timeline wise, WCW had just folded like within the year. Yeah. So, um, yeah. A lot of like WCW guys were there. Like, some legends like Larry Zabisco, then a lot of like uh, like crowbars and like like those guys. Um, but there, it was just a great place to, to work. And, and Nick would get us booked with Bert, and then we also go work for Derek King 
down in Dyersburg, um, yeah. Tennessee, which yeah. was, um, you know, just good old, like, just good experience, like, just doing it for the love of it, you know, these small shows, but um, just learning, you know, from different people. And uh, I remember one night we were in Alabama, and um, we're close to Alabama, and uh, it was like a Saturday, and I remember thinking, man, I got to go to class on Monday in, in Ohio. I'm so far from home. Like, <laughs> it's just, you yeah. Know. But, it's uh, the part of paying your dues, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, but um, looking back, man, it's like those are like the best memories you have. Oh, yes, man. So much fun. And then it was just different then, too. Like, a, So the other thing was – um, and this this changed by the time I got signed, which was just a few years later. But, like, uh, Con, Rob Conway and, and Nick Dinsmore and John Cena would come down with us. And they would work those shows for Bert, and they'd get paid for it. And um, so, you know, it was, it was cool to get to work with them because they were, you know, obviously ahead of us. And, uh, you know, all pre-TV, obviously. But um, Bert would pay them. And I guess I never really asked or I never think about it then. But uh, I guess the office let them do that because they got extra experience working, I guess. You know, right. um, I remember, like, it would be like me and Jeter versus uh, – Versus Cena and Brickhouse, um, Brickhouse Brown. Remember no him? Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And dude, I rem I remember the finish made no sense. Really, it was the heels over like clean, and Brickhouse had a valet that didn't use her. And I remember later John was like, "Hey guys, like sorry, he's like, we you know we had to do what the vet said." So. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I remember it was me and Sly <clears throat> and. I think Nova and maybe Matt Morgan. We got got booked up for HWA in Ohio. Yeah. And then yeah, then we got there and they didn't pay us. They were under the uh, assumption that they were still on because remember HWA when they were under a developmental deal with yep. WWE, there was like they would do you know talent exchange and then yeah. they were no longer with WWF, but then they still thought that there was a deal there or something. So they didn't pay us. I think they gave us like $20 for the four of us, which we went to a waffle house and split it. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. But that same night, that same night is when uh Sly had got a call that we we're going to start filming vignettes to do the love resistance thing. Oh, so no I didn't really give a shit about the payoff at that point. I was, I knew I was going to TV. So yeah. Yeah, man. Awesome. So, yeah. um, oh, I was exciting. What now you're, <laughs> Your tag team was with Trent Beretta. I never met him. Yeah. But who, came up, with, who came up with the amazing name, the Dude Busters? Something yeah. tells me with the Johnny Ace idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, so funny enough, so um, that, Trent actually used that name on the indies um, and uh, with his with another guy. Um, oh, and I, I don't – I forget his name. I mean that respectfully. I don't know if you know, some dude – Right. Oh, I, forget, I forget his name, but um, I never met him. And he he was under um, he had to run an FCW or an uh, NXT. I, I I'm pretty sure. Um, anyway, so th there were the dude busters on the Indies, and, and everybody kind of has the same reaction. I think when you hear the name, right? Like, I remember when I first heard it, I was like, oh, "That's like that's a silly name, you know, dude busters." And then so when um, we ended up using it in FCW, and um. Like Dusty liked it, and, and and it worked, you know. And uh, then when we got called up, Trent and I, we were just Croft and Beretta. And then um, one day we went to TV, and um, this is like six months in, I guess. And on the, you know, they remember they put the, the like the TV format up on the wall, like if you posted throughout the building, then yeah. it would change. But it, it just said the Dude Busters versus you know whoever we were working that night, and we were like, oh shoot, so that they're calling us that now, and then. Yeah, we asked one of the writers, and they're like, "Yeah, we, you know, we, we researched it with, you know, trademark and all that, and we can use it." So that's how that came about. So it was actually like Trent's, you know, thing, and it just one day they started calling us that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's an awesome name, dude. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. People remember it. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Um... What, where did you get called up first? Was it the ECW brand or was it right on SmackDown? Yeah, the ECW brand. And then, um, and then, you know, interesting thing is, you know, and I, Renee, I'm sure you remember this. When when originally I called up SmackDown in 2006, when I got fired, you remember that? 
Oh, is, are you allowed to talk about that? With your new yeah, profession? yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's tell everyone why you got fired. Yeah, because that's a whole story, and that's an after-school special. In the, in the, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in my first time, and, and so, you know, in OVW, get a contract, and uh, um, so, like, where, where I was at, um, and I'll say this, too, really quick. It is cool, like, Renee, when you said you guys got the call for La Resistance, um, that was always a neat experience, like, seeing your buddies – you know, get caught up and seeing them do their thing on TV, you yeah. know? So, like, yeah. when I look back, I just saw something recently. It was you and Conway versus, uh, I can't remember. But I just remember thinking, wow, you know, I, I remember that time. You know, my memories are associated with, you know, yeah. you know that back then. So, uh, anyway, that time, OVW, 2000. So, I, I started getting caught up, like, going on the house shows and doing stuff. And, and you know, they'd be like, yeah, great, great reports. Um, don't know what to do with you yet, so keep doing your thing. You know, and get up, you know, find the right gimmick and all that. And so, um, I remember in the summer of 2005, um, Val Venus got hurt and they needed a baby face for the house show. So, I remember Tommy Dreamer called me and he's like, Hey, you know, we're going on the road this week. And, um, and, and that was always fun when you, you know, go do the, the main roster shows. And, uh, and I was like ready to, you know, to go. And, and um, then Matt Cap, so Matt Capitelli, you know, who was from Tough Enough, and the Miz were, were going to be a team, and so they had them on the house shows. Matt got hurt, so like the very next week I went back to doing house shows because I, I replaced Matt. So they wanted the Miz on the road, so like all of like summer of '05, we did all the Raw house shows, me and the Miz. Um, but I was a replacement. That fall, um, Capitelli's back, and then I'm back in OVW, and it's like. Uh, and I was getting kind of like bored, and, and, and I, so I, I asked Paul Heyman if um I could be a heel on the OVW TV, and um me and Jeter, John and Jeter, have been like really good friends since we both started. We never did anything on TV together, so I was like, let me turn heel, and me and Jeter will, will be a team. And uh, so the way we did it was um I turned on Matt Capitelli, because and um and I've never and Renee could attest to this, as I can attest to Renee. Both of us really safe in the ring, you know, e easy to work with. And uh, I've never hurt anybody except this one time I knocked Matt out when I turned on him. Yeah. And um, when um, he, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because he, we were with Mark Henry. So, like, Matt had to take all these slaves from Mark. And uh, we were talking him through and he's like, okay, but he was dead weight. You know, he couldn't post. I think it was anybody other than Mark. <laughs> just dead, you know, dead weight in them and, you know, safely right. put them down. Right. Um, but, you know, if, if you, someone gets injured with you, it's kind of, you know, I wanted to go to the hospital with them. And he's like, man, I, I'm fine, Cage, I'm fine. But I went with him anyway to the hospital. And then that's when we found out he had a brain tumor. You know, wow. Which, yeah. Yeah. And I was, accidentally knocked out Matt, too, at a house show. We were wrestling together at WWE. Hmm. He came off with a double axe handle. I caught him with a drop kick and boom, lights out. But he had a history of concussions. I don't know. Do you think that could have possibly contributed to his brain tumor? The fact that he had so many, too much head trauma. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I think it might be maybe more the other way. Like the, he, because it was in there, and that may have led to. I remember him saying he he was susceptible to concussions, and sometimes his vision would get screwy for no yeah. reason. Like you know, after once he realized he had it, I think he was kind of like, oh yeah, you know, this I have had some issues. So yeah. Um, so anyway, um, like the next week or that, Howard, remember Fink, Fink, Howard Finkel would be the guy that called you to, yeah, you were booked. And, um, I remember I'm back on the road with, with the Miz now. And, uh, I remember Fink saying, Chris, you're back on the road. I'm fortunate for Matt, but good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The way you talk sounded like the way you announced, didn't it? Yeah, for sure, man. Was, <laughs> yeah. Which was kind of comforting. Cause it's like. Wow, that's the voice I know from my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> and um, was this story leading up to you getting fired? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the whole like backstory. <laughs> yeah. So um <laughs> so now I'm back on the road, me and the Miz. So now they're like, all right, let's just put Kate with Crage with the Miz. So like it's this this whole like you know sequence of things, and uh um so now we're we're me and the Miz are debuting. It's on SmackDown another few months of like you know how it can be, like they don't know what they're gonna do. Finally, we get the word in March, so it's like, 
sweet. And I'm like, sweet, finally. I've been on a developmental few, few, few years now. And uh, then um, that weekend, we all go out like we would do. I end up getting really messed up, almost die from drinking and all the other outside substances I'm putting into my body and, um, you know, end up in the hospital and uh, nearly died. And uh, um, they um, got me to the hospital in time. And then uh, this is also when the wellness policy just went into effect. Right. It was like timing didn't look good. So I ended up, ended up getting fired for that. So it was Damn. like, oh man, like all this, like finally I get my chance. And it's just like, dang. And um, it's gone. so uh, I was out. <laughs> but you ended up getting rehired so how long explain the process of that like you getting your job back yeah so like and then i'm straightening myself out you know and, and um and then like i kept going to ovw just to stay in the ring shape a couple years later it was like two years later johnny came back through because wwf had pulled out you know they, they were no longer developmental and um i met with johnny and um you know i i, I was surprised like how how nice he was to me just just because you know previously you know the way i was let go and i think they didn't want anything to do with you know i was a liability and uh and uh anyway he's like um well he's like we like to, i'd love to give you another chance he's like i hated to fire you you know and uh so ended up getting rehired then this is this is like uh september of 2000 october of 2008 and that brought me down to fcw and then um it was interesting. So when I came down to FCW, it was, it was an interesting position I was in because I was like a like a veteran guy. Then I was, I've been in it seven years, and um, and I just had the best time. And the, the, the trainers here, you know, were Doc, Doctor Tom, Norman Smiley, and um, Steve Kern, and Dusty was like creative, and uh, it was cool. And there was guys I never met before that I got to know. And then some, you know, old friends were there, and it was I was just fun to be back, you know. And then um, they put me and Trent together relatively quickly, and um. Uh, after about a year, they were just like, "Yeah, these guys are good. Let's just bring them up to TV." Um, so, and that was like November of two thousand nine. Um, oh. So it was just one of those things where I remember I, I was out at the beach and they just with a random call, "Hey, you're at, you're needed at TV, um, you know, this week." <laughs> so you know they don't tell you really anything, right? Um, and uh, and yeah, it was ECW. It was the ECW brand. Yeah. And that's where we debuted, you know, this time, um, kind of with no plan, but, you know, whatever it was, I was just glad. Yeah, you're that. just lucky to have an opportunity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, we got a few fan questions here. Let's get to them before. Uh, yeah. Questions. All right. Here we got the first one. Fixed Extreme dream. Bob, Renee. Perfect. Uh, hey guys, what were the dental things Jason needed? <laughs> Is this from oh. Wednesday? Um, What's that, Tafe? Chris, do you know Jason Sensation from the Attitude Era? Oh yeah, yeah. With the impressions. Mean, well, he he comes on here on a weekly show, and uh, <clears throat> he needs dental work. I'm not sure, but he desperately needs dental work. So we might do something to help him out. Oh okay. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Let's get to the okay. Freakzilla, thank you. Hey guys from Nova Scotia here. Sorry if you've answered this, Renee, but how big of a jerk is Bubba? I remember seeing you in Monc Moncton, oh, no, NB in two thousand three. Don't bash your name. Don't bash your name. <laughs> Moncton. Moncton. <laughs> uh, Bubba was a dick. Did you have any run-ins with Bubba, Chris? No. Who, who's Bubba? Bubba Dudley. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um. Just a handful of play like I did like a six man with him once for Cornette and uh and then just when I was like on when I was up there, but they were they were gone, I think, by the time I I, I I would just run into him. Like I was either like the new guy from developmental and yeah. I didn't have much interaction with him. Oh, is that the the match and where they power bombed the girl through a table and Cornette flipped the fuck out backstage? Um I don't I don't Think so? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Can't <Not> remember. <laughs> yeah. We got one more question from Fixed Dreams. This, uh, Chris, this is one of my uh, loyal followers here. That every time he sends a question, I got to put my shades on. Cool. Just, uh, Cheers, yeah. guys. Your experiences in the fake ECW obviously differed greatly from the original ECW. Uh, what do you think about the back rake as a finisher, as well? Back rake as a finisher. Hitman, what do you think? Can it work? Like the old school, like, 
Yeah. That's right, brother. The finisher. I think I think any one well you can do it to anybody, right? So that's good. That's true. Mm. <laughs> Versatile. And, yeah. And I guess if you sell it properly, anything could be a finish. Right. Well, we asked Mondo the same question, and we came up with if it's a back rig and turn around to a small package, that could possibly work. <laughs> that that legitimately could work, sure. It could work, yeah. How did you enjoy your time on the the East the fake ECW? I called it. Yeah. I hated it because I didn't make any money. How about you? <laughs> yeah. So like, um, yeah, you know, I remember when they. I remember talking to Tommy Dreamer a lot about that when they first rebooted it, and I guess the original plan was going to be like the you know, the original ECW, and it quickly shifted away from that. And uh, right, yeah. By the time we were there, we were there towards the end, you know. And um, so I actually liked it because um, you know, it was right where we got called up to, and but like, dude, nothing changed. Like in the sense, you, you would they would tell us the writers would text us like the day before like TV and that's usually what would happen. Right. In, in, you know, so that was cool. Cause you know, it would change so much like on raw or SmackDown. Um, so how long was your run on the main? Cause I was gone in 2007. So I didn't really get a chance to see your whole run. How long did it last? Yeah. Just like a year. Um, so we were, we were with ECW and then like, uh, um, it, it shut down. Then we went right, we went right to SmackDown and, uh, like that same day, actually, because we had final ECW taping, and then we filmed SmackDown after and uh, against Crime Time. And so we oh, gave yeah. you SmackDown, yeah, right. And then, um, and, and then like we, we had some good matches with the Hearts, um, TJ. Did you know TJ from Canada? Oh, yeah, I've known TJ since I was 17. I bet. Yeah, 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 and um, great worker, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're 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 only there for about for uh, it was just like just over a year, and then I got let go, and um, they kept Trent. Um, oh, yeah. So, what was the reasoning uh, for the second time being released? Just budget cuts, or yeah, they you know they just yeah like they like they do, and um, but it was interesting though you know because I it, I had arrived at a place just you know personally where it's like I, I started thinking you know because wrestling was like my life, it's all I was gonna do, but. I, I started thinking, you know, may, maybe there are some other things I like to like to um, do. I'd like to, so you know, get married and have a kid, which you certainly can do that wrestling. Um, so I was surprised they let me go only because, like, um, you know, Renee, like I was used as like utility guy basically. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I could work with anybody, uh, have a good match. Trent and I would do a lot of tryouts with guys. I remember we do like the Usos tryouts. Uh, Great guys, you know, and uh, we, you know, Fred, and then Fred Rosser took over for that, Darren Young, which is, which, uh, but um, I thought they would just keep me around for that, you, you know. Um, so when I got let like, go, oh, I was, was kind of surprised, but then part of me was like, huh, all right, well, what other, what kind of opportunity does this create? And um, yeah, when Ace called me, um, you know, this really he's like, hey, you know, just um, you can come back if you want, I can get, I can get you booked in Puerto Rico, Japan. Um, and I knew then I was, I was just going to take some time just to like, you know, slow down and just see what, what, what was going to happen next. Um, and it was funny because, um, I still remember so that, that with that release also was Luke Gallows, who's, you know, one of my best buddies in wrestling, uh, Julian Hall, who I kind of started with and, um, Goose Mahoney, the referee and Shad. Um, you know, uh, all people I've known in a lot of years. Yeah. And um, actually, my last match, which I didn't know was going to be my last match, it was a dark match. It was me and Gallows with Goose as the referee. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. So once you got released, uh, was that all she wrote for wrestling or did you keep on doing it a bit? No, man. That that was it. And it's like, because um, I, I just was, I, I didn't want to do like indies and, uh, yeah, it was. I just, I just, um, like, get out of it completely, but like, not in a, like in a in a negative way, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and um, and it wasn't too long after that that I got hired as a school teacher. Um, so I think having a new career really, um, you know, got me away from it even more. But it's funny too because it's like, even though I've been out of it, it's like it's such a it always be a part of me, you, you know. Oh so yeah, 100%. yeah. 
So you ever like, get the itch to to get back in there? Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like um, it's like I miss it. Not in the sense where I want to go back and do it, but just like um, yeah, I I just love the performance aspect of it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like I, I I miss that part of it, but but now like to do like an indie show or something, it's funny because like I, I'd be more worried about getting hurt, you know. Right. Right. Um, Oh, yeah. I'm still in good shape. It's you know work out all the time, and have to, have to work a little harder actually today. You know because it's like I used to be able to eat whatever the heck I wanted. Right. But, you know I can't do that today, but uh, you know just you know how, how pro wrestling just beats your body up, and it's you get used to it the more you you know the more you're active in it. So I'm afraid I'd, I'd like drop a knee or something. I'm like <laughs> blow an ACL or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get to a few more of these questions. Uh, this one's on ECW as well. Gunner, Dragon, thank you. What was it like backstage when ECW was canceled? How was the morale, man? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I remember we had a meeting uh, with, with Laurenitis, and um, really all he said, well, he just says, like, don't worry, no one's in danger of losing their job. Uh, you're all Bullshit. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he, you're going to go to Raw or SmackDown, and then um, – we got this new thing coming up. It's called NXT. He's a it's gonna be it's a cool <laughs> logo. It, it's a stacked logo. It says NXT. Um, and then I remember, and that's pretty much all. And I remember after the meeting, Trent, my partner, was like, "So they basically told us there there there's a stacked NXT logo for this new thing they're doing." <laughs> no. yeah. yeah. And um, you know, I, I, morale was okay because, like I said, that like that day was the SmackDown taping. So like for us anyway, we, we worked SmackDown that night. So it was like, uh, I was like, sweet. They're going to, you know, they're going to use this a lot. We're going, so I wasn't like concerned or anything, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember morale being like super low. Cause I guess it's not like, you know, the company was shutting down. It was, you know, Hey, you're going to be dispersed to raw or SmackDown. Right. Right. <laughs> what was the, um, cause we've had your former tag partner, Tank Tolland on the show and Mohammed yeah. Sandal. Uh, Magnus, you call them, oh, cool. and obviously when they got called up to the main roster, there was issues backstage with bullying from some of the established people, and a lot of the former OVW guys struggled moving up to the main roster because Renee will tell you they try to keep you down. Did you have any experiences like that when you moved up to say SmackDown, or was it kind of a lot nicer when you got called up? Yeah, you know, I I never did. Um... But, um, you know, I think part of that is because I, I don't think, um, uh, like, I, 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 I got along with everybody, but I think I wasn't intimidating to anybody either, you know, whereas, like, maybe, Renee, you you experienced that. It's like, here comes this young kid. You were 19, right, when you got called up, or 20? 19. Yeah, so it's like, here's this 19-year-old, been working, what, six, seven years already, or? Uh, by that years. point, six years, yeah. Yeah, you know, looks like a million bucks. You know, I, I can see how right away there'd be some maybe prof- professional jealousy. Um, I know, um, Matt Morgan, um, experienced that quite a bit, yeah. at least in some parts, because here's this seven foot, looks like a million bucks. Uh, He's a threat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I think that that all, that played a part, and um, and you mentioned. Mah- so Mah- Magnus was on here, Muhammad Hassan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, see, so, and I, we were roommates at that time, and um, yeah, I know he he really had a tough time when he first went up, and um, uh, and I think some of that, you know, what he'd probably tell you was some of his own doing. Um, I don't know if he shared that only, not that he deserved anything, but I, I know like he it was a tough position because um, he you know I, I think he, he was in a really top 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 spot from the jump. Yeah, top heel. Yeah. Yeah. He was getting the world title. Yeah. And um I remember him saying like and telling me that Vince was like, you have to protect yourself as a top guy. And I think that's when the heat started because he was supposed to work Sergeant Slaughter at some show or something. I think Matt Mark was like, Hey, said something like I think instead of just being like whatever, I think he was like, uh, why well, I, I can't I don't know exactly what was said, but he said something to offend Sarge, you know, and that that's um, and if you piss off a guy like Sarge, all the whole locker room hates you, right? Yeah, yeah. You're so beloved. Um, yeah. Then there was the incident with um, 
when, when with Eddie Guerrero put use the camel clutch and Kurt was like, yeah. hey, you shouldn't use your finish. And, you know, it, instead of just letting it go, I think Mark was like, hey, but, but just trying to do what he thought was right. And he said to Eddie, hey, that's, you know, my move. And Eddie was like, my dad. My dad and, invented it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, but but they, they, I remember living with Mark at the time, and it was like, yeah, um, a very stressful time. Let's get yeah. to some questions. We got a big one here from. Uh, this is Squidward, Squidward Tentacles. Squidward yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most, Most annoying, annoying roommate, roommate habits. habits. <laughs> uh, I, I'll attest to this. I remember going over to. Uh, Chris and Mark, uh, Magnus and uh, Jeter's apartment and eating all their food. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So I, I actually don't remember that, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, pal. We would hit, we would hit uh, the sticky of the icky and then I'd get the munchies and then I'd eat everything in the goddamn apartment. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to Kidoma around the corner there? Yeah. Yeah. I got another question here. Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, love, love to, play, to play, with play with boys. Thank you. Did Chris have any interactions with Brock Lesnar? Yeah, actually. So, um, like like those those early OBW spot shows I was talking about. Yeah. Um, me and Jason Lee, um, who was an old school OVW guy, was in WCW for a bit. We worked Brock and Shelton in like my sixth match. <laughs> so that was a uh, that that was that was a pretty cool experience at the time. And um, uh, and then Brock was around a bit when I, you know, when I first started um, in OBW. And um, yeah, how strong is Brock, dude? So like, yeah, I mean, you can feel it. So he, one of the spots was a uh, gorilla press into a um, into a you know, catch me on the shoulder and slam, yeah, slam me down. Yeah. And um, I remember landing on his trap, and I was like, man, I kind of hurt. <laughs> and uh there was a funny spot where um um i hit brock towards the finish i still remember this i hit brock in the back and then um shelton was supposed to like, immediately come in and, and hit me with something and shelton was late and after the match brock was like dude he goes i had to sell his forearm like you know about me because <laughs> i remember he did so i hit him and <laughs> sell it. the way that right. I he said it in a funny way. He wasn't. He wasn't being like mean about it. Um, right. <laughs> Let's get to some more questions. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say we get a ton of uh, Shad Gaspard questions on here. Um, obviously tragic. What happened? Do you remember? And I was like, I remember being. I think I was 11 years old watching Dude Busters in Crime Time on SmackDown. <laughs> Thanks yeah, for making us a... feel old. Yeah. <laughs> I, I <laughs> like vaguely good. remember you guys working a lot, and then I think after they even split, you uh, and JTG had something. Um, any memories yeah. though of Crime Time? Oh yeah, so like um, so Shad, I and mean, we called him Beast. Was his like what he called himself? So we all called him Beast. Beast. Yeah, that's probably how you remember him, right? He had a tattoo on his arm too, right? Beast. I actually drew that tattoo for him. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> oh yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he he came in um in like 2003 OVW. Uh, this it's, it's probably to, to make money too, which is a good move, you know, for Danny. Um, they, they they had tryouts, and um, so like people from the Indies from all over would come and try out for like a week, and then they took in like ten people or something like that. And um, Beast came from that. So did like Mondo Tank came from that. Julian Hall, um. Quite a few people that would end up getting contracts and go to you know TV, and so Beast was just or Shad was just one of those guys like um, you know just a really like really uh, sweet guy you know he's big great big guy up dude yeah yeah and and um uh and yeah you know he was just he was just a good dude I, I think about him you know often um no okay, kidding there's a heroic way he passed away too trying to save his son in the ocean Hero. who did. Uh, beast when he said, oh, oh right, right, right. I'm sorry, I thought you said someone else did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very sad, but uh, yeah. overall, I think everybody likes Shad. Yeah. Next question. Uh, thank you. Hey, Kaylin, any stories on working with Gold Dust? Yeah, yeah. That that oh, that was the other thing I liked about ECW was getting to work with Gold Dust. So um, 
Great worker too. Oh man. Um, yeah, great worker. And it, it was cool. Like, because, um, you know, he was one of the few guys, you know, that was still actively wrestling that, you know, I'd watch as a kid, yeah. you know, when I was, you know, like a, 10 years old. Um, and then he's that's you know, before so you were born, Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 1990. And, uh, long before, yeah. and it, it was inspiring too, man. Because, like, um, you know, this is 2010, I guess. And, and he, I think he was maybe 40 then, like around my age now. And man, dude, he was quick. He, he was like at his, um, doing some of his best stuff, I think. You know, he, he, he was lost a lot of weight and, he, and he, he just moved really good. And, um, it was just cool to be in there with a veteran like that, you know, someone that's been yeah. around that long. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think one of my first Raw matches, I think it was tagging with – he was tagging maybe with Lance Storm possibly. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great experience. I think we got some more questions. We do. Mr. Krogan, what's going Krogan. on? Uh, Renee, did you have – Oh, have you ever seen the video of Inoki yelling BS to Luke Gallows during his crappy match? Should he have retired? He's a jabroni. Just saying. Oh, my God. We can't say that, Krogan. We have one of his friends here. Did you ever see that, Chris? The the match in Japan where uh, Luke Gallows is working with uh, Sylvester Turk High? No. I remember Turk. He was in OBW when I first started, actually. Right. No. So he was like a legit shooter amateur, right? right? Yeah. And at one point in time... He was really over in Japan. He was working for the Zero One promotion. Yeah. Well, IGF, that was Enoki Genome Federation. Enoki had started his own group, and he brought okay. over Turkai and, uh, and Gallows. And they had a singles match, <clears throat> which a very American-style singles match. We didn't, didn't really get over with the, the crowd there. Yeah. And Enoki got so mad, he came out yelling bullshit grabbed the chair, started hitting it against the rail. And uh, Chono, Maso Chono was like on commentary and he actually smacked Chono against the shoulder and told him bullshit. And I think they, they went home early. They rang the bell and yeah. Huh. yeah. No, Should he have retired? Uh, I probably would have thought about retiring after that, but he didn't. And uh, he actually ended up having a great run in New Japan afterwards. So... Who Gallows or uh, Turkey? Gall Gallows. No, Turkey. I think that was he was done after that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gallows has done great. He, he's he's yeah. He had a good run. Remember, after. remember Johnny A saying, "Hey guys, eighty five percent of his business is backstage." Uh, I think <laughs> Gallows is a big because everybody loves having the guy around because he's so funny, right? <laughs> Drew's one of those guys that um. Yeah, one of the people that, yeah, everybody loves. Yeah, and everybody has a Gallo story, I think. Or both yeah. Of them. <laughs> when I first met Gallo's, he was, his name was Freaking Deacon. He was in yeah. Deep South. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. He kind of looked like, a, he kind of looked like uh, Damien Demento. Yeah, because he had his hair and, um, yeah, because he's, short. I yeah. mean, he went bald when he was like 20. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, he, he told me one night, um, uh, he was. It might have been a raw or something that he was at, like get backstage, you know, when he's a developmental, and they had some legends there. And he said, um, after the show, Doug and <laughs> Hacksaw was like, kept was talking to him and kept referencing back in back in my back in our day. And Drew was like, so I think he thought I was just some like old school like grizzled you know vet, <laughs> right? No, because he and I are the same age. Yeah, we're yeah, young, right? that's right. When yeah, I met him. We're like. Probably, I was probably 22 when I first met him. I thought this guy had to be at least in his 40s. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and, uh, he, I remember when he, um, well, actually, I was, that's when I was in FCW and he came down here, which was a lot of fun because we, we hadn't seen each other in a while. You know how that is, right? You, oh, yeah. Back with your buddies. And uh, he was so happy because he was, wasn't doing fest as he was able to shave his head. You know, that <laughs> made him instantly look 20 years younger. <laughs> right. Right, that Festus gimmick, that was a rib, wasn't it? <laughs> and man, it's like, yeah, but then like he, that's a testament to him, right? Because it actually got over. Yeah. Or yeah. you know, and, and um, yeah, on paper, it's like, oh man, what? <laughs> <laughs> so you're still living in Florida, yeah? Yeah, yeah. When I when I came here for when I got rehired, I came to Tampa, and uh, yeah, I was just talking about this earlier. Yeah, I I really love it here, so I just never left. <laughs> right. Right, so now you're a full. Uh, so you did the teaching gig for about a decade, and now you're mm -hmm. doing public speaking. Is that it? 
Yeah, I do speaking. Um, you know, that satisfies the performance side, I noticed. It's kind of, you know, this kind of the same feeling of preparing for a match and um, in a way. And uh, what's funny, too, man, it's like I said, you know, wrestling always be a part of our lives. And it's like, um, funny enough, it sounds crazy. But when I got into school, when I got into teaching, I was like, r- wrestling prepared me for that. A lot yeah. of similarities because it's like you're up in front of a, cra- a classroom you, 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 you're telling a story basically and you got to get get something you got to get a story across so that's teaching a lesson plan and you're controlling the people right? exactly and if you lose if you lose them you never got to get them back and it's just like right. and you just, only way to learn that is by uh by doing it and it's like um yeah and then, yeah and then like I, I i thought arts then i started to see like you know it's not that important like in a good way like like the district doesn't care about it. So they're not on your ass about like test scores and all that. And uh, there, there were days where I'm like, this is a, ha- this is a spot show. This lesson plan is a spot show. Right. <laughs> I'm going to say one thing is sit at my desk and let them color, you know, let's just do walk and talk tonight, boys. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. So yeah. do you keep in touch with any of the guys? Like, in a- yeah, you know, it's funny how that goes. Like, right. It's just like, there's just people that, you know, for whatever reason, you just, don't stay in touch with. And if you saw them, you know, you'd catch up and then there's guys you stay in touch with. So like, uh, yeah, I still stay in touch with uh, Trent, you know, my former partner, um, yeah. Kurt Hawkins a little bit. Um, we stay in touch. Uh, um, uh, oh, Nick Dolph, you, you know, Nemeth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, you know, really good guy. Uh, Ryback. He's, a, he's an Ohio guy too, right? Yeah. We're from the same area. Um, okay. Oh, Ryan Reeves, right back. You still keep in contact with him? Yeah, yeah. Has he you lost his mind, or is he just? No, he he um <laughs> yeah he he had like a well, that whole lawsuit thing with with WWE and um did it just uh, end? I think yeah, like in his favor, yeah, yeah. right? It just yeah, ended. I think. So. Did you ever meet him, Renee? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. When he was he was training in Deep South. He got um transferred over to ovw and i happened to be in deep south just hanging out and then i actually helped him move and drove uh oh, okay yeah that's right dude yeah. i mean i didn't know you helped him move but i'm timeline wise and um i still talk to nova um simon dean um joey mercury um you actually awesome. talked to him that's one guy that keeps himself in obscurity dude, actually you know what actually it has been it has been a minute. I, I talked about his birthday last year. I think I texted him on his birthday, but like, yeah. Um, so I actually haven't talked to him much recently. Um, so the lawsuit with Ryback was that over his name, Ryback? Y- yeah. So he, um, so the way I understand it is right. He, yeah, he, he and he uses it for a supplement brand. Um, okay. By the way, it's, dude, the supplement, I, I think it's fat burners and like they work really. Like, I tell him, like, yo, dude, I was like, this ain't charity. I was like, just, you know, because we're buddies, I, I don't buy your supplements, but uh, yeah, because his, his supplement brand is called the the big guy, you know, right back, feed me more nutrition, and those were all like the WWE things. Um, but they were in a lawsuit, like, I don't know the details, but uh, yeah, I saw he tweeted that like it's finished or, or he won or, or it's wrapping up. Or is something. this just recently? Yeah, like within yeah. like a like the last month or so, right? So I think it might happen. To, it might have to do with McMahon uh, trying to sell the company. He just wants to get rid of all the headaches. Yeah, it could. Because um, he just settled. Uh, you remember the lawsuit, uh, the the the, uh, the uh, allegations back in the '90s with that female referee that accused Vince of rape. Yep. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Just settled. She. They just settled that for like. Yeah, no, she was sure. suing for like twelve million. So I imagine if it's settled, she probably got at least half. Yeah, dang. Um, I mean, when all that stuff broke, it was. I mean, it was kind of like, well, yeah. I mean, I'm surprised it took that long because you know you don't always, you don't always hear stuff like. Really? See, I, I was the guy that never heard shit because I always kept to myself. What, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Was, was that stuff like that you heard a lot of? Because you dated a few of the girls in in the wrestling business, right? Back oh yeah, yeah. So like, you know, or you just I guess. Or repeat anything that's not, I don't know for a fact, but it was kind of right. You just hear shit. Like, it was like, usually there's smoke, there's fire, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Did you oh, ever hear geez. that? You I ever keep hear that? Cheater all the time. Was that? 
I keep in touch with Jeter all the time. Oh, well, Jeter's the greatest guy ever, man. I yeah, actually yeah. sent him a link for today's uh, stream. but uh, He's out with his, his parents, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd love to do this again and have all in Magnus, too, just so we could tell little stories, man. I was going to say, that would, um because when Jeter and I talk, we just, he, right away, we just start reminiscing. So, dude, that would be a lot of fun to have us all on. Yeah. I'd, it would be. I'd love to come back on. It'd be a lot of fun. And, yeah. So, do you have any stories about, I don't know, me and this crazy shit I did back in the day? Yeah. Um, God, I can't sure. remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, um, I, uh, I remember, I don't know if you remember this, we, when, um, this isn't too crazy, but, um, I remember you, you, you would remember, so remember when you get, you'd get caught on, on the road or you get called up, debuted on TV, but you're still in developmental. So it's like, technically, so I go to practice. Right. And I remember one time, like you were on TV and, um, and, and it might've been like the day after, like, cause that's always rough too. When you, like, if it was raw, you know, you get in early like Tuesday morning, you know, from the night yeah. before. For, and, uh, and I remember you coming to, you had to come to practice. <laughs> I just remember you being like, just like wiped out. And I think Rip made you get in the ring. And he's like, Randy, get in there, work the arm. And, uh, <laughs> and I remember you just being like, dude, come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not, you know, but the crazy stuff, I, I mean, I was probably just as, you know, right there with you. So it's like, I, maybe I don't remember. I just remember, you know, us hanging out and right yeah, <laughs> you know. the, the raw the raw schedule is you go on the road friday saturday sunday do taping on monday mm-hmm. and then yeah you come on tuesday but for like the first six months me and sly would do friday saturday sunday monday yeah. then they make us go to smackdown to work dark matches to get more experience oh. then we fly home on wednesday but wednesday was obw tv right yeah. Right. And you have to do practice on Thursday, then back on the road on Friday. So, like, that's I had cool. no time off for, like, close to a year. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And um, that's right, because you – so you're in a, in the position where it's like you had a lot of experience at that point. And then Sly mm-hmm. was, what, less than a year, right? Dude, when he got hired, he only had about 10 matches. Wow, yeah. And his first three matches were WWE house show matches against Orlando <laughs> Jordan. Oh dang, yeah. yeah. That's right. I remember Orlando had to work with him because uh they, they put him with Orlando, I remember. Well they had started out together in Florida. I guess Rocky Johnson was training him. Oh okay. okay, yeah, that was the question. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but he, he got in because he him and Pat Patterson were really good friends. So. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I still talk to him all the time. Um Slide. yeah, he's living in Naples. I think that's near Tampa, right? A couple hours. Oh yeah, from Tampa. it's like two hours south of here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, do you remember the time when Sly? I remember you telling us this. Sly, um, he he put the tag belt in his check bag and it got lost. Oh, that didn't surprise me. <laughs> and I, I remember you, you were like, right. One one was, time, uh, I would always put my tag belt in the my care uh, carry on. Right. That's right. what you're supposed to do. But then the yeah. the the, the, fl- the plane was full, so the stewardess said, "Okay, you're gonna have to put your uh, your bag in the." underneath or whatever and then i didn't i didn't think anything of it i was like okay well i know it's going to get in the plane because we're right here yeah. and then uh bob hall yeah he was really on my ass though oh, he yeah. started cutting a promo on me man like what the hell are you doing because he was mad the fact that i was a tag champion right yeah yeah Fuck. yeah well like, what are you supposed to say what were you supposed to do not say no i guess i was supposed to take out the belt and carry it in my lap during the whole <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wearing it on the plane. <laughs> yeah, and I, I would get heat for that, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus Christ, are we all out of super chats? Yeah, we got we got one more here. <clears throat> Fix stream, Bob. Thank you. Uh, Red Sox over uh, Red Sox or Yankees slash Mets. I'm Mets. Yeah, so. are you a baseball fan, Chris? Me actually no, I'm I'm a, I, I I like all sports. I'm a huge football fan, NFL. So I I'm a Cleveland Browns fan, being from Ohio, right? Uh, which is kind of rough, but stick with your team. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so I pay attention to baseball. Um, I don't know a ton about it, but um, you know NBA too. But football is my main one. Football is your main one. So, do you ever do like any autograph signs? I guess it's kind of hard since you're. Partner Trent is with AEW now. You ever catch AEW? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I've done some. Uh, like, I mean, I've done a ton of like podcasts and stuff. Usually, stuff that doesn't require me to travel. That that was the other thing. Like, like I'd get asked to do something, but like because within like less than a year, I was, you know, had a whole different career. So, um, and and, and that, that that was a learning curve, right? Like it's just kind of like being in the ring. You just got to learn by doing it. And so, um, yeah. I never wanted to go away for the weekend because you know, my weekends were like recovery time in a way, or just to relax. Like like I never. You know, I was 31 years old, and I never had a job where I had to be up at 5:30 every day. You know, <laughs> yeah, right? That's, just That's the thing about wrestling, man. It's like every day is Friday, and every night is Saturday, or some shit. I guess. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think about that, like, um, like a, like a Wednesday night, which just can be just kind of, you know, <laughs> like. Right. Well, that was when we were in OBW. Wednesday was the TV. So, like, Wednesday night after TV is usually a party, right? Because yeah. Thursday was usually tape reviewing day. So, yeah. it didn't really matter if you were hungover or shit, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Renee, this is a story. This is, that just reminded me. Crazy story. So, um, do you remember when me, you, and Mercury made those weed brownies? Oh, yes. Were you there, too? Man, what? was I screwed up. So, you want to tell the story? You want Yeah. Was the way I remember it was after it was um when you said film it was um thankfully it was Wednesday night after it was after TV taping and um okay. someone had the idea we're gonna make weed brownies <laughs> I remember the three yeah. of us were okay yeah. you, <laughs> the three of us are in our kitchen and um we're just standing around and somebody maybe Renee maybe it was you just dumps. We don't measure it or nothing. We just dump the whole weed in the. Oh, that was Joey. I said, Joe, how much are we supposed to put in? He's like. I don't know. He dumps the whole ounce, okay. an ounce of weed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we're like, all right, I guess we bake them. So right. um, we bake them, and then um, I remember Renee, you just grabbed like half the fucking thing. I grabbed <laughs> ate half of it. And you go, I gotta go pick up Eric. <laughs> yeah, I had to go pick up my girlfriend at the time at University of Louisville, and okay. uh, you know it takes about a good forty-five minutes to kick in. So I picked her up, and halfway. Halfway home, man, her face was starting to like do this shit. I remember you saying I'm trying that, to yeah. cafe. I'm trying to like because she was totally against all like gimmicks, right? So like I'm holding on to and then you remember Robert Fury? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, he came over to watch a pay-per-view or something, watch wrestling. And yeah. um yeah, I I thought I was dying. I I saw the pits of hell and I never did that again. That was the first and last time I ate weed brownies. Yeah. Yeah, that's so um and I remember that. I remember, you, yeah, you left, and then um, I get really, really high that night, saying say like, "I'm like, damn, I need to sleep this off." And this is where it got really strange. Thursday morning, I wake up for film review, and I never experienced this before. I'm like, dude, I'm so high. I was like, oh, <laughs> like what a film review, just feel horrible. And I remember thinking, thank God, this is the only film review, and um, <laughs> go home, take a nap, wake up. I'm still like high. I'm like, oh my god, dude! I'm never gonna be normal. And um, finally, like, thir- and I remember you came over, Renee, and you're. Like, I might have waited. I think I took him a little bit after you or something. And you're like, I remember that's when you told the story about Erica, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. mouth moving, his words aren't matching up, and uh, you said, yeah, it'll wear off eventually. And I remember finally Friday morning, I woke up and I was like, okay. finally felt normal. Yeah, yeah, never doing that again. Never doing it again. I never have. So. Yeah, me neither. I think we got one more question. Yes, we do. I know you're uh, uh you're, oh Mr. Krogan. If Bob Holly came up to you crying asking for forgiveness, Renee, what would you do? Also, would you accept being inducted in the Hall of Fame? Well, that first question would never happen in a million years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen him since and he cussed me out because for whatever reason, I don't care. I don't have time for that that person ever. Uh, would I accept a, oh, so let me tell you this story, Chris. I was rehired in 2011, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I was, cause I lived in Japan for three years. I was working for all Japan and then. Yeah, uh, I knew that. I, yeah. I see you on social media. Yeah. And then, um, so I, I signed a new contract, but I had gotten deported from the United States after, uh, cause I had a. Ironically, we're talking about pot. I got busted with like one joint in Georgia. Yeah. That was on my record. So basically all I have to do is get a waiver. You apply for a waiver and then 
it costs like a, a grand Canadian and then it takes like a four or five months they can get in. Well, anyway, um, when they apply, cause they're actually going to give me a green card. And when, uh, they put, you know, put all the paperwork through to process it, I had to get this waiver and I hadn't done it, but I couldn't do it. I was living in Japan, you know, halfway across the world. Right. So basically Johnny said, yeah, just take care of this stuff. And then, uh, uh, we'll bring you back on top. So I flew all the way from Japan and that's ironically, that's the same, uh, two days before remember that big tsunami in like 2000 uh it was 2011 that big tsunami hit japan and like yeah. killed a bunch of people it was two yeah. days before that so i had just missed that Whoa. tsunami yeah and uh i think that was march possibly march or april i forget anyway um yeah so then i, I called up johnny there was no answer and he never called me back so the, this really? leads up to this question, Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'll do an appearance for you when you pay me the remainder of the contract that I signed in 2011. They paid me one tenth of it. Uh, you want me for anything? I want that money. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, so you signed the contract and everything? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 And then uh, when Johnny said, Well, listen, I feel bad. Uh, I'm going to give you, are you sitting down? I'm going to give you six months of the contract pay you six months of a one-year contract, which was six figures, six months worth. And then, yeah, but in my mind, I still want the rest of that. So yeah. to answer your question, Krogan, if they want me for anything, I want the remainder of that contract. So there. You know, in, in really, because they um, they were probably looking um, – well, I mean, you, you, would add, you would add to any, you know, promotion, um, uh, but they were also probably looking for experienced guys. Is that right? Well, yeah, but – like I had proven myself once I left because like, you know, my whole gimmick was the French guy with the French flag. Well, from right. 2000, 2008 to 2010, we, we actually, I was at a promotion and we toured France. We did like five or six tours in those two years. Mm -hmm. We sold out every major arena and did really good business. It was actually to the point where WWE sent the promoters a cease and desist that I couldn't use the Dupree name because they claimed they own it. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, and um, I actually that joint in Georgia, I remember that. That was like in remember <laughs> that was like a 2006, right? 2006, May of 2006. You know, what gave me the the, the pot, Mercury, Joey. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's that. I remember that time. That's right when I got fired. So I was just like, kind of like you know, uh, doing well. and, I, and I remember, I re, the way I remember in my mind was, you literally left our place. You're like, all right, I gotta go, and then like. Same position, like I'm on the couch still, and Mercury is on the dining room table on his computer. And he goes, he looks at me, goes, "Dude, Renee got arrested for pot." Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. the one that called me. Oh shit! Well, yeah. yeah, so they locked me up, right? I got yeah. Overnight in the jail, and then as uh, I bonded myself out, it, dude, you know how much that cost me? It was fifteen hundred dollar fine, three hundred and fifty to get bailed out, bond bonded out and 125 dollars to get my truck out of impound oh, that was one expensive joint dude right then, uh, right yeah and then uh so i'm driving back from it was dade county georgia and i'm driving back to louisville and then i get a call from joey and yeah i guess it was on the internet by then because get this the one of the, the the jail guys whatever like the officers w was a pro wrestler an independent huh. pro wrestler. Oh, so, shit. Yeah, of course. Who'd have thunk it, right? Right. And, uh, I actually kept in contact with him, like, a few years after that. But anyway, so that's how that got leaked. You know, a small town. Yeah. They're going to tell people. And then, of course, it gets on the internet, right? So I actually, Joy, I said, Joy, what should I do? Am I going to get fired? He was like, yeah, you're going to get fired. I was like, fuck. So what should I do? He said, uh, call up Johnny and just dude yourself. So yeah. That's I remember that. that was my first wellness policy strike mm. yeah you were you were in there with a young kid right i remember you saying i, I wish i was able to help him out you, you remember that yeah yeah he was only like 19 or 20 i guess he got arrested from crystal meth oh shit. And then, uh yeah when i went back and uh paid the fine i actually put like a couple hundred bucks on his books oh that's that's cool yeah yeah, yeah. oh well yeah that's funny that's not, that's not totally how i remember it, it was uh <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Dude, you have not changed. You're still the same dude, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 in a lot of ways, yeah. Um, yeah, man. That just reminded me. Um, I still talk to Wavel a lot. Wavel, Wavel, Wavel Star? Yeah. What a great guy, right? Yeah, Wavel's the man. Yeah. He's uh, uh, he's from, was it Manitoba or Regina? Saskatchewan. Oh. I think he's from Saskatchewan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He was a, he's a Native American, and he uh, because of his Native American status, he could come work in anywhere in North America without visas, I believe, right? Yes, I, yeah, yeah. I think so, something like that, yeah. Yeah, so he drove he drove and stayed in Louisville trying to chase that dream. Did he come close to getting hired at one point? I remember yeah. telling Jerry Briscoe about him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he did, and um, uh, and I think he he was also you know, content with, with, with doing his own thing, you know, um, as, as well. Cause he, I know he likes to like do his, uh, you know, the shows he does now and everything. And I remember him telling, you know, I remember seeing him at, um, uh, raw one time and, um, you know, Wade was just fun. He's one of those guys where pretty much everybody likes, you know? Oh yeah. 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 He goes, he man. Up, keeps himself in amazing shape, dude. He's uh, like, dude. Yeah. Yeah. He he's mid forties. He's really fucking up my indie schedule. <laughs> <laughs> remember that time he put on the self the self tanner he loaded himself up and then he slid into the ring and it got all over the mat and then he flipped the fuck out <laughs> yeah Cause, yeah Cause i think he was like the opening dark match i think right so for the whole show i'm just this big fucking smear of brown shit all over the ring yeah um, well, other than that, Chris, I want to thank you. It was so great catching up with you. I want to yeah, thank you. Yeah, you too, man. Re appreciate you having me on. And, and um, you know, like you were saying, it, it's just right. It's like, it's funny because, like, I've been out of it. But, right, it, it's, you know, it'll always be a part of me. And a lot of that stuff I remember from, you know, it feels like it was, like, yesterday. So, and, you yeah. know, you're one it's of the guys been, that really remember, you know, good times. 21 man. years, man, since we first met. Wow. Dang, dude. That's th – that starts – that starts to happen, right, where all of a sudden – because it used to be, right, it used to be a decade ago, you know, you were four. <laughs> like, right. right. No, right. so it's like, dang, dude, Um, yeah, 20 years ago, like, right, you know, it was, it was yeah. things were starting to be. Uh, yeah. And you got your co-host here who was born in 97, <laughs> 98, 98, the year I started wrestling. 98. Well, dude, what's, that's, what's funny is, um, so I, uh, I met my wife in 2012, I was 32, and, um, I started this right before I met her. I was like, yo, there's like a whole other crop of women to date. Um, but yeah, I didn't realize that because again, like if, if a girl was 10 years younger than you, she was like 14 or <laughs> right or 15. And uh, I'm at my school my first year of teaching. And then um, I meet this girl and, and I'm like, she's, I'm like, how old are you? And, and uh, she's 21. And so I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of young. But I mean, and then I met a girl, another girl who was 22. So it was, you know, all of a sudden I was like 10 years apart from somebody, but they were like an adult also, like, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. When I yeah. first met my wife, like, we're actually practically the same age. She's a year, year and I, but she's Japanese and like Japanese women stay young their whole life, right? Like yeah. my wife still gets carded, like buying lighters or tobacco at the, the store. Yeah. She's 38 years old, but, um, when I first met her, I was like, oh, I feel weird talking to her because I thought for sure she was a teenager, right? But <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, dude, I want to thank you so much for coming on. And definitely, I will try to get a reunion set up with myself, uh, you, Jeter, and Magnus. I think yeah, that would that, 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 be awesome, man. Yeah. Man. All right, my Ooh. brother. Take care. Yeah. And please don't be a stranger. Let's keep in touch, okay? Yeah. Likewise, man. Appreciate you, man. Right, and brother. Jonah and James, good to meet you guys officially on here. Good to meet you, too. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. We'll Take see care, you. bro. Yep. See ya. What? Well, that was uh, Chris Pavone, Kalen Croft, the one half of the Dude Busters. The dude um, I think we had a super chat up here. We do. We do. Mr. Krogan, uh, what are your thoughts on supernatural gimmicks? What was the gimmick about with the goatee? Also, sorry for calling your friend a jabroni, dude. Oh, that was. Uh... <laughs> mistaken. I'm not that close with Ryan, but uh, yeah. Um, supernatural, like the Undertaker, I guess that would be a supernatural gimmick, right? Mordecai, yeah. Mordecai. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was the deal with the goatee? Um, 
just wanted to be different. Uh, you know, being pro wrestling, you got to stand out and be different. So I wanted to become a little darker character as opposed to like the flamboyant French guy with bleach blonde hair. So, yeah. Are we going to talk about some of the news now, uh, Jameson? Uh, yeah, just seen Wait, that. Just, <laughs> no, I've just seen that. There. Were just... you mixing yourself a margarita? What were you doing, pal? <laughs> Getting the baby asleep. Oh, okay. Okay. Parental duties. Asking. Parental duties, yes. Uh, me and my you should wife do that one day. No, me and the wife have agreed that we'll never have children. So Come on, man. We need what a third generation. To... What? We need, we need a third generation Dupree. Um, well, isn't there that guy that Vince called Dupree? There is. Max yeah. Dupree. Yeah, but, yeah, sure. but he was old. he's actually older than you. <laughs> right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, no, I've just seen that an actor just went missing. A British actor, uh, Julian Sands. Went missing? Yeah. Uh, he, wow. He's done some stuff like uh, 24 and stuff, but... Um, Got missing. It's like a search for him. I just saw someone mention it in the chat, so I thought I'd just search it up. But um, yeah, so we'll uh, resume talk about uh, Rita. So yeah, so when what like she was the first WWF female referee, and um, yeah, um, left alleged that Vince McMahon sexually assaulted her and kind of disappeared and. With the Me Too movement and the Vince McMahon allegations coming out, more talk got about air and well, you, I think you said earlier to um, Chris, I think it was meant to be for like fifteen million, and if they have settled out of court, which well, it looks like eleven and a half or twelve was the original, right? So usually when they sell when they settlement, it's usually for a lot less, but I mean it should be at least half. So if we add it's that like, to the other twenty. Four twenty-five million dollars in settlements. We're up to over thirty million. Oh, that! <laughs> Jesus Christ! He's got he's got expensive taste out of Finny Mac. Yeah, he does. Other than that, what other uh, wrestling news? I heard a rumor that there might be mass releases soon. Possibly. Um, what else has happened? Uh, Devon Dudley's just left WWE. Yeah, wow. um, I saw that. So probably show up in AEW in a couple of weeks. Um, well, actually, I saw. I I was gonna say right after that was announced, um, Bubba posted a picture on Instagram of like the Dudleys, and it was like TikTok or something like that. Like, just wait. So I don't know if they, if he might be going to Impact because Bubba's Whoa. there right now. Whoa. I know, but Dave on had a lot of health issues lately. Yeah. Didn't he have back surgery? Isn't that why he chose to take the coaching role? I have no idea. Well, I think he had some sort of surgery. I don't know if it was back surgery, but I know he's been in poor health, like a lot of visits to the hospital. So I don't think he's capable of wrestling match. Plus, since being retired, he has put a bit of beef on. Oh, it's kind of like Devon put on weight and uh, Blubber actually lost weight. Yeah. <laughs> it's because Dave on more ha happy in life. Well, um, Dave was the workhorse of that team. I mean, because I mean, he's always been a big guy. He was probably like two sixty when we were wrestling. And, yeah, you know, he would do that headbutt off the top every night and do that well, spinning that. elbow. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he, the thing is, like all that weight every night, boom, boom, boom. That you know, that catches yeah. up to you. Yeah, yeah there's uh so uh besides that um the rock has said far and so this is basically confirmation that he's gonna be coming back he's yeah. he, he said <laughs> he alluded to far he won't be coming back because he hasn't had enough time to get himself in shape yeah i'm like saying. you're in the gym every day yeah i know there's a difference between working out in the gym and ring shape yeah but Come on. So I'm thinking, yeah, it's basically confirmation fat he's returning. Um, I will. Cause, uh, sorry. Um, I was just, yeah. I was going to say, like, he was, he was winded against Cena like 11 years ago, right? So I guess there could be like that. And I, like, I always look at Goldberg when he comes. I know it's a completely different animal, but Goldberg's in like really good shape for his age. But I swear he gets gassed after like a literal minute in the ring. 
Goldberg. Well, does, his so matches only Goldberg. lasted a minute for like. Yeah. They last. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. Well, well, during, during the year of your creation, 1998, his matches lasted about three minutes. So, <laughs> uh, you know, 22 uh, years later, nothing's changed. Um, but the so thing I'll is, the, it... matches, the matches in uh, Saudi Arabia, dude. Like I've been to Qatar, which is basically the same climate. You get you get blown up because of the uh, the heat. The man. heat. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Um. But so uh, the other day they uh, they announced that Cody Rhodes is returning at the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the other vignette, and they announced I'm going to be in the Royal Rumble match, which. I don't mind so much, but I love surprises. And I'm like, I know it was expected that he was going to return, but it wasn't 100% confirmed, but now it is. Um, they've said the reason for it is twofold. They said people expected it anyway, so they said we might as well announce it. Plus, apparently they're happy with the other surprises they've got lined up. So there's the theory of that the reason they announced Cody's return is because people will know that Cody's coming back because there'll be a bigger return later. Shock, The Rock, for example. Whereas in, if Cody returned as a surprise, his surprise return would be overshadowed by The Rock's surprise return, if that makes sense. Anybody's surprise return would be overshadowed by The Rock. But, well, that, well, yes, that's why... They, if, it, if it is to happen, that's why... They've announced that Cody's going to be in the Rumble, so you are expecting it. Yeah. So, if The Rock does come out, it's going to overshadow Cody, but it, it, it kind of works. I kind of understand where they're coming from, basically. Um, yeah. But with but with The Rock saying that, that he's not in shape to that, I'm like, I, I think I tweeted out, I'm like, yeah, so this is basically confirmation we're getting Rock and Roman at Mania. They did wow. a very... Uh, with Edge, they did a similar thing, right? Like he returned in the 2020, was it 20? Yeah, 2020, got injured and then won 2021. But he announced it that he was going to be in it like a month before, right? Yeah. And, uh, and then came out at number one. So I could see it. It's kind of the same situation with Cody. Like he's been out, what, about a year now or a little bit less? Yeah, same with, same with uh, Shawn Michaels, 96. Uh, he was, well, it, I say he's injured. That's when he got beat up by the one Marine because he was ch- he was uh, what he got trying to get the Marines' girlfriend. But in WWE, well, they said he was beat up by like seven or eight Marines. <laughs> it was just the one. Nine was it? Nine. Uh, but it was just the one. So he was out for like a couple of months, and then he made his announcement like a few weeks before, and I'm going to come back to the Rumble. Then he you went on to ter- win it. In the territory days, if if you got beat up. Like in a bar fight, the promoter would fire you. Yeah, I've had that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. We had a couple of questions up. Let's we do. Uh, the Dark Knight Returns. How's it going? Kevin Owens being called a prize fighter pisses me off. Everyone knows he's a, he's a pussy. Any wrestler that just pisses you off make you cringe because of the gimmick. Yeah. I don't think... Well, I don't know the guy personally. You know, you got to be tough to do this, but you know that was the KO MMA type gimmick. You know, that's what PCO was doing with when he came to England in 2008. That's where I first met him, and we ended up tagging. But he wanted to call himself KO Carl Willett, and uh, oh, yeah. he was going to test up. Yeah, and he actually did dark matches. Uh, in England, with, under that gimmick, yeah, like a mohawk, and it actually looked kind of cool. But, That's pretty yeah. cool. I, I like what he's doing now. It, he's kind of a supernatural gimmick, I guess now, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't watch it, but uh, I see yeah. some of the he, he made. Yeah. He's essentially Frankenstein, right? Yeah, I mean, for he him had... to take those bumps at fifty-six, I mean, mm-hmm. like, mighty. He had a really brutal match with Luke Gallows, actually, where they, like, tore the canvas up. Like, the whole ring was exposed, and they were taking bumps on it. And then uh, I think he choke slammed Gallows through the ring, actually. I don't, it was a rare, like, big thing for Impact, I remember. The match that got him back on the mat, I think, uh, uh, yeah, was um, – wasn't it him and uh, Gwinter or Walter at WrestleMania week a few years ago? Where they, like, Possibly. chopped each other? Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, it was actually. Yeah, yeah I remember that now. Um, <clears throat> speaking of ch chops, well, slaps, have you s checked out Dana White's new promotion? I have not. I haven't oh, checked no, it out, but yeah. Tape. I am convinced now the thing with him and his wife was a publicity stunt. You think? He's, he's bringing out a new promotion, slap fighting, and him and his wife slaps each other like two weeks before it comes out. <laughs> yeah, and the slap he gave her wasn't exactly a knockout blow. It was very, very soft. You know what I mean? Yeah, and um, I'm convinced of the publicity stunt now. Because if... I wouldn't. But <laughs> if, you're the, if you're the man, you'd be like, right, wait till we get home. <laughs> I right, wouldn't. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not advising that. But that's... You, Basically, you wouldn't make a scene in front of people, especially when you're one of the most recognized people in the world in sports, well, you know, entertainment. Um, well, that's the thing, because I hadn't heard much about his slab fight promotion until that thing went viral. Yeah. Right? And I think it's done good numbers, and, like, I've checked out some of the clips on uh, TikTok and that, and uh, I love the reactions uh, when he gets slapped. So the one guy slapped the other, basically, like that, and he like went over. Um, it's entertaining, uh, yeah, to be yeah. honest with you. I, James, but, do you know is it uh is that on a network that is in partnership or, or with AEW's network? Yeah, it's on the same one. It's on the same one. Okay, I was making sure. Yeah, because AEW AEW is the lead into it. Wow. Oh, TNT. I, I think so. Or TBS, I think uh, AEW is the leading threat. I might be completely wrong, but so it's I basically that... two guys at a podium and they go back and forth slapping each other in the face, slapping each other, but like really, like uh, scarily hard. It. Yeah, it's it's really scary to watch, honestly. Like the way their faces like just shake from the sheer impact, and they have to take a second too. It's crazy. Yeah, CT boys, congratulations! I know. I was, I was about to say that. Um, and they, I mean, because like I, I found out about it two or three years ago because it was very popular in like Eastern Europe, like Poland, Russia, Czech, uh, Czechoslovakia, and even the girls do it as well. Not just the men, the, the women do it as well. And um, there was this one guy, I forgot what they called him. They used to call him like the farmer because you know he was he was a farmer, <laughs> and. Um, he was a big guy, like not muscular, just a big built guy. And he was up against this other lad, skinny lad. Um, he had his eyelids um, tattooed black, like his I eyeballs tattooed. I've seen that, yeah. And he slaps him and oh. Wow. Yeah. So Cafe Day, with Nick, Cafe Day, Renee next week, uh, slap fights. I don't think <laughs> well, so. No, thank you. You got yeah, a twenty five chats here popping up. Just you and me, James. Uh Martin Brophy, thank you. What's harder, becoming or stay relevant in wrestling? Um What are you doing, James? <laughs> 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 You're practicing your slap? <laughs> okay. Uh what's harder, becoming or stay? Well, it all depends how you're booked, right? Um uh, a lot of guys will change up their gimmick. Like, for example, Undertaker is probably the best of reinventing himself while staring. You, you understand? Like, if you look at his evolution throughout the years, how he stayed the Undertaker, but, you know, he started off just with the cap and the gray gloves. And then, you know, there was, that was what, the Mortician Undertaker. And then he went to, like, the Ministry of Darkness Taker. Then, then he went to, like, the Biker Taker. Well, I hated that one. I didn't like that one at all. And then, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, staying relevant, especially in this day and age where there's so much wrestling and there's so many different guys. And I think people's attention spans might be, you know, the lowest it's ever been, thanks to, like, social media, the way we're programmed now and stuff. So, yeah. I saw um, a TikTok video. Uh, that there was this guy... You look like Triple H. I've never seen it. He, uh, this guy's walking through like a supermarket. And he's like, oh, it's Triple H, it's Triple H. And the guy looks like Triple H. And the guy starts laughing. I'm like, could you get up? And the guy, he might not even been a wrestling fan, but he started laughing because he knew who he was talking about. 
Right. Like imagine they say, "Oh, you look like Johnny Gargano." It'd be like, "Who the fuck?" Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of guys. Yeah. Okay, we got another question. <laughs> yes, James. Thank you. Other James. Thoughts Hello. on Oldberg? I think he's a. What is that? Belland. A Belland? Is that a British yeah. thing? It's yeah, a man. British term for a uh, penis. Oh, gotcha. You for, the end, for, the, for the end of it. Yeah, if you look at the end of your shaft, you can see that there's kind of like a Russian or well, German helmet or end or bell. Bell mm -hmm. end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I like England, a lot of people are the, oh, you bell end. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Once this explained to me, okay, it's a dickhead. Um, very, I, lucky, I very fortunate. He got in at the right time, looked like the biggest superstar at that point in time in the business and uh, was pushed to the moon. He made a lot of money. But unfortunately, he's dangerous in the ring because he hurt me, he hurt Brett, hurt a lot of guys. I love hearing, I love replying to the trolls in the comments. I, I call him Corey because they have no idea what it means. What does it mean? Can you tell me all the time? Yeah. Okay. Well, it, 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 it'll be our inside joke. Okay. So I think a few fans know what it is, but I'm like, uh, I'm like, all right, Corey. Well, so, that's uh, funny because the video that you first saw me and my friend Corey when we were both drunk. Yeah. 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 It's not even an English thing. It's something from my culture. So it's not even like an English thing. It's just something like from my culture. So it's great. Uh, <laughs> so no one knows it what like, it means. Kind of like when uh, they call women Sharons now or whatever. Can't oh, remember. no, no. No. Okay. Um, well, tell me off camera. And it's Karen, not Sharon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Wait, James, can, what, yeah. what what culture is that, James, that you're talking about? Oh, gypsy. You're oh, a gypsy. Gypsy. <laughs> Yeah. You're a gypsy? Yeah. Do you just mean you travel around a lot as a kid, or you're actually? Well, it's my culture. I thought you knew that. No. No, oh, we never exclusive. had a conversation. Isn't that exclusive? Lot? Well, what does that mean? You're kicking me off the channel now. Well, <laughs> I can get, I can get you done for discrimination now, boy. <laughs> oh, you can't call people boys because that could be a racial discrimination. Oh, have you seen the video on TikTok? I have not. I don't have TikTok. Oh, oh man, they're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they are hilarious. But the guys do it as a prank. But it goes around. Were you passing them sausages, boy? That's and the bad. people's like, who, who are you fucking calling the boy? Right, I'm right. telling you now, boy. But uh, it's it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's a, that's a big no no. Actually, I, I heard a lot of Republican, uh, not re but senators in the United States want to ban TikTok because it's secretly like a Chinese uh, spyware. Yeah. yeah, they've been trying yeah. to do that for a while. Um, yeah. But I just I heard that this is the first time it was signed on by both sides of uh, of the respective parties. I hope they don't. I get I get good views on there when I post some wrestling stuff. <laughs> right. I mean, they already stuff. have all of our they already have our data anyway. Like it's not. Yeah, that's the thing because all your information is in there, right? It's a Chinese yeah. creation app or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Uh, show the video, Jonah, of slap highlights. I'll I'll get it queued for next. I'll find some good ones to get them queued for next time. Do you have any uh, videos lined up tonight, or do you have anything? Um, I didn't have anything prepared. If you give me, you have any ideas? I mean, should I go? Should I try to get that slap fighting? I could go grab it. Yeah, why don't you get that done, and then uh, James or uh, James the Gypsy over here? Well, uh, <laughs> uh -oh. only we can well, use that word. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can get you done for racism now, boy. <laughs> there you go with the boy term again. <laughs> James, James, cover the super chats. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab my phone. Yeah. Let's try and catch up where I was. Uh, here we go. Uh, oh, I, I, I mean, I've got the answer for this. Uh, why do you think Chris Hero was never called up in WWE? Why not, James? Because he can let himself go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry, I'm but and I'm, I'm a fat guy, but you saw him when he was in when he was in RRH and on the Indies, he was in relatively good shape, mm. and. Got it to WWE NXT, and I'm sorry, you just put too much weight on. And Vince McMahon in charge, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's he, the thing. Um, he was wearing trunks and like a fest, like a 
basketball jersey. Basketball jersey, yeah. When I first met him, I met him in England, and I remember I would walk to the gym, and they were a whole group. They were like uh, Generico, that uh, what's one of the best friends, Chuck Taylor. Mm-hmm. All of us were living yeah. in the digs there in England, in the house. And I was the only mm-hmm. guy that actually went to the gym. And, um, yeah, I – I mean, he wasn't overweight, and he was really good in the ring. He could really move. But then I saw a picture of him in NXT. I was like, Jesus Christ. I think he uh, had I, a uh, – retired? I think he had something. I think he had, like, a, as far as I know, like a medical, like a thyroid thing, I heard. Because he his weight kept, like, fluctuating, I remember. And he just kind of said, like, screw it. I remember I read that, like, when he was in NXT as Cassius Ono. But... Did, he give up the, did he give up the business? I haven't heard anything about him. Well, I think he's got a podcast. Oh. Is he a podcast? Yeah, I don't know how many people listens to it. Mm, okay. I, I would imagine, I would imagine quite a few because I would imagine he's got like a lot of friends in the business, especially like current day wrestlers. Because a lot of today's current day wrestlers are from ROH. True. That's so, true. Um, but yeah, Zemo or Zimazo. Uh Did any of the boys ever talk? <laughs> Boy. Did any other boys ever talk about jumping ship or retiring? Any good stories? Does he mean from WWF to TNA? Possibly, I suppose, if that was during your period. Yeah, Booker T. I remember I did a show for Booker T because he had his own promotion there. Was it Reality of Wrestling out of Houston? Mm-hmm. And uh, it was the day John Cronus had died. We were all backstage and I remember him you know, saying, yeah, I got a meeting with TNA uh, next week or whatever. Because uh, Rob had jumped by that point in time too, right? Because Rob left in 2006. Uh, and I actually, I was talking with Gail Kim. I was in uh, I was in FCW and I remember calling up Gail Kim and Doug Basham. They were dating at the time. and She said she was going to talk to Terry Taylor. I guess that was head of talent relations at that point in time, right? Hmm. Then uh, when I got deported, but then I, been, I went to Japan and stayed there for, and I don't regret that decision because I had offers to go to TNA like 2013 hmm. or whatever, but uh, I chose not to. Well, Booker eventually made the jump, but from everything I heard, he wasn't really well liked backstage. I think it was I heard Cornette, Cornette saying he was a pain in the ass. Yeah, and like booking decisions, things like 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 a lot of the talents, well, they just did not like working with him, and it was like he got there. I would imagine he was getting paid handsomely, but I I, I don't I'm not I don't want to say anything out of line, but I kind of felt it kind of seemed like from what I've heard, allegedly, was like once he got there. And they didn't give them the world title. He felt like it was beneath them, and they couldn't wait to get back to WWE. Yeah, that's the, uh, the grass ain't always green on the other side, right? Yeah, I did enjoy. I but I will. I'll always give people credit. I did enjoy his work in the uh, main event mafia. It was like him, Sting, Angle, Nash, and Scott Steiner, mm. and uh, that 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 was a really entertaining group. And he was entertaining in it. And uh, he had this alter ego called uh, Black Snow, and he would mm-hmm. like. What to say all this gibberish on the microphone, but it was so hilarious, especially when he was like commentating. So uh I will give him credit. There was times during that time he was actually really entertaining. The best is when Scott Steiner was the ring announcer. Yeah, it might have been the two of them together. Oh, here we go. Alright, so I this is just one from like multiple angles, but it's fucking crazy. Look at this. Wow, and knocks him right on his ass. Whoa. See, man, I think we had this conversation the other day about punches. A slap can do just as much damage, dude, as a punch. And you have left I chance. I think it knocks them out. Up. Oh, yeah, you can knock yeah. someone out with a slap. Bust their eardrums, break their nose, yeah, break their jaw. Them. Boom. Oh, I think he's wearing earplugs or something. That would make sense. So he they have like it looks like they have on? something in their ears. You see that? Yeah. yeah. See, so right there, that's CT concussion right there. Look at the crowd they drew though. I yeah. 
New career path for you, Jonah. If Not the me. movie and if the film and uh, <laughs> TV industry doesn't work out, <laughs> Sexton Hardcastle, most overrated wrestler of the ruthless aggression era. Here we me. go. Me. Agreed. <laughs> Humble answer. Ruthless aggression, overrated. Who would they use on top? Oh, fuck my guy. Bleach. <laughs> Goldberg. <laughs> as far as talent, Goldberg, yeah. It's because he was so goddamn dangerous in the ring. But he wasn't there sure. long, too. I mean, he never even did house shows, man. I think he did like one or two house show loops the whole time he was there. Mm. Wow. I mean, if you, can get, if you can get the deal, go for it. Good for you, but. I remember Bubba Dudley making fun of him before he, because you know when he would punch himself and like fire himself up and yell, like he really did that for a shoot, like that. And he did it before a house show, and then that was one time Bubba actually popped me, popped everybody, because he was like, Wah! like behind <laughs> Bubba's back. Yeah, it was funny. Do you remember Renee? Did you hear the time? It was during his recent run. He was ending the show with a uh, with a promo. Goldberg was, and. Uh, he headbutted a. He always headbutts the locker, I guess. But he yeah. headbutted a locker before coming out to cut this promo, and uh, it was leading up to something with Brock. And he comes out, and he's already he's like bleeding, like he really headbutted it hard. And the whole yeah. promo is like, you know, gibberish in the ring because you could tell he's like feeling that he just <laughs> knocked himself out backstage or whatever. Right. It was, it was crazy. So, and it, I think that ended Raw too, and it was Goldberg just like barely staying alive on the mic. <laughs> It's like that time he he uh, punched out the limo. It was in WCW, and he knocked out the the window of the limo and like fucked himself up and had to take like three or four months off or whatever. It's like James, are you alive? Okay. Yeah, now I'm just going through. Bagel Topper. Bagel Topper. What's going on, Waldo? Uh, you guys check out the Snake Pit with Jake. Um. Different energy this show, but interesting stories. I learned Elizabeth's parents were a factor in putting the kibosh on Jake slash Macho feud. Oh, I heard that too. Actually, to the grapevine. Yeah, anything Jake does, I'll listen. I'll, if I mark out for anybody, it's Jake the Snake Roberts. So, um, yeah, I would love to have a conversation with him and just talk wrestling and wrestling psychology and. Just like sit under the learning tree because you never forget, you never quit learning this business. So that's one guy I would love to sit and just have a conversation with. Stay tuned. <laughs> Shh. Um, done. Thank you. Speaking of Chris, <laughs> speaking of Chris Hero, his GF, Rachel Elring, left Impact because they didn't wish her a happy birthday on Twitter. At least that's the rumor. I had that. Oh, that's got to be bullshit. No, I heard that. You know what today's women, what you did today's wrestlers are like. What? No, I heard that. There was a footballer over here, Yaya Torre, played for Man City. And he got upset because they didn't give him a birthday cake. And he basically, he was gone not long after. <laughs> His agent got on a big uproar. They didn't wish. And the guy was a great player. And uh, his agent was in uproar. It's like they didn't wish him happy birthday, give him a birthday cake. People can get sensitive, Renee. You're from the wrestling industry. You know this. My head exploded in a goddamn plane. I almost <laughs> bled to death, and I didn't quit. And right. after, the, after the paramedics told me, if you get on this connecting flight, you could, there's a strong possibility you could have a blood clot and die. And I didn't quit, and I went on the plane. Jesus. Honestly, man, if you were 10 years younger and one of the mainstream companies these days, you'd be really, really appreciated. I could go there now and get over and be a top guy. Well, actually, now we date, date there. I think he's one of their head agents, right? So, Renee, the shades, Fix Dream Bob. Oh, Fix Dream. Where's the guy gone? Was this a Billman Jr. style dud? No, he was here for. <laughs> he well, here for James told me before the he only had an hour, so we actually went over an hour. So I don't want to take up his time, you know. And 
uh, I call him Hitman, Kalen Croft. Hitman, uh, it was great to see him, but I would love to have him on here with Jeter and Magnus because then, you know, it's the com- It's like when we have Paul and uh, Jason, we can play off each other and the conversation goes a lot, flows a lot better, right? Yeah. But another thing that I want to announce is that we're looking for a female co-host. Uh, I kind of want to have three live shows a week, but I'd like to have a different flavor and have a female co-host to give like a, a woman's perspective. Puerto Rican. <laughs> what? Puerto Rican. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, okay. so we're on we're on the search. And if there's any female wrestlers listening that would actually be interested, contact us. Um, yeah. So other than that, we got more super chats. James Lynch, con man Thompson looks like he should be on how to catch a predator. That smug. Oh. <laughs> Piece of shit. No, the reason I don't like the guy because he had made some comments. It was when uh, Jr. was on his podcast and whatever, and they were doing an interview, and then he got Jr. got me mixed up with Sly, saying that I was at a show, and then he uh, Jr. ribbed me and got me kicked out of the had security coming. But that wasn't me. That was Sly. And then, then it made like references to Sly and Pat's relationship, you know, wink, wink, hunt, hunt, that homosexual shit or whatever. And then uh, that's when I was on Hannibal and I made a comment like, hey, man, this this is a bunch of bullshit, you know, don't talk about it. And then he actually reposted and made that a single clip. So that's why I don't like the big fat double shit. There you go. I did it, and you wish you could. Okay. <laughs> Dominic, thank you so much for this donation. And that finishes us. We're caught up on Super Chats. We're caught up? Okay. Yes. Someone said Taylor Hendricks would be a good co-host. I think she's uh, with Vince Russo, right? Yeah, we can steal her. <laughs> <laughs> we, get, we get better numbers than Russo as well. I'm sorry, but we do. Well, we get a lot of – we're not where we want to be, but I think we're doing very well. But, yeah, I would definitely like to increase uh, uh, female viewership. And what better way to have a female on and giving her opinions on – you know what I mean? Gives it a different flavor. I think we got some more Super Chats that just popped up. They're rolling in. Uh, thank you, Freaks, Edge of Sanity. Renee rates Heat Spot. Dumb face outside. Work small for a uh, work smarts for a dive. Hit the ropes, then quickly step through and poke the eyes. Rate that, Renee. Ten out of ten. I love it. I'm stealing. It. <laughs> That's the idea. So I dumped the face. Let's go through that again. Oh yeah, take a look at now, it. Now, yeah, I, I know what he means now. Yeah. Dump the face outside. <laughs> dive, dive, dive. Hit the ropes, then quickly step through and poke. Yeah. I'll yeah, instead of diving, instead of diving free, just slide under the knee, then right. just poke the ice. Or you can like go, go between the middle and just come off with a double axe handle. You know, yeah. I, I bet you like some of these smaller indie shows where there's a lot of like diehard fans that I probably get over. Like, I mean, look at Pockets or uh, uh, Orange Cassidy. I listen to so much Cornette. Pockets. <laughs> I know. There's Pockets. I'll- I found out what your favorite YouTube channels is as well, and I'm going to have to ask you off camera what some of them are. <laughs> I don't like the fact that we're sharing a YouTube channel. Right? <laughs> well, I, I created a YouTube channel, so, you know. <laughs> right. No, I'll tell you right now. I like I've, Soft Underbelly. I like the financial channel. I love Soft White Underbelly, yeah. Yeah, I like it's, the financial no, channel. It's Can- Canadian Prepper is the one. It's like you're preparing for the end of the world. No, there's no, there's a great channel, Canadian Prepper. He's into the, like he follows all the Russian wars and shit that was going on, and like it's kind of like a doom and gloom doomsday shit. But I like, the, I don't know, that's what interests me. I like being doom and gloom. Huh? <laughs> I thought you was about, about to say, well, I, I, I like being doom and gloom. No, I like to know what's going on. Soft white, soft white underbelly cannot put you in a good mood. I know that, but it's it's an interesting channel though. I love no, they do those interviews crazy well. Yeah, no, it's a reality of like the world. Like, uh, yeah, you know, what's going on, especially in Cali? Mm. Next question. Please, not Alice from Corny's old show. Oh yeah, she uh, she like quit because she couldn't take all the fans like dishing on her, right? 
Yeah. No? Okay. Quit shaking your head. Tell me. What happened? Allegedly. Allegedly. That's important. Allegedly. She was whoop whoop with some fans. Oh, really? Allegedly. And then she quit? Well, that's when everyone got on her case. <laughs> oh, well, that's just rumor and innuendo. Can't believe that. Unless you see it, you can't believe it. And then again, oh, no. you might believe half of it. <clears throat> anyway, allegedly. Jonah, are you live? Oh, yeah. Any Abyss stories, Renee? I only met him like once. Really, really nice guy. You know, for a big guy's a giant, man. You think, you know, yeah, but very, very humble guy. I believe he's also an agent backstage, right? He is, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah, I really hated that Christopher Park gimmick, though. But that actually is almost like a real, like the real him, like mm. very timid. And, that guy, uh, yeah. But he's actually a really cool dude. I really liked him. Met him in uh, Japan. Let's see. <laughs> Pussy monster, Renee. I'm a huge fan. I want to smoke a blunt with you. Also, get Hamble and Jake the Snake on. Oh, I saw Jim Duggan's voice. Well, I don't smoke the marijuana anymore. Uh, it's so weird, man. Like, when it was illegal, like, that was my go-to, like, substance to, like, relax. And now that it's completely legalized in my country, it's like the fact that I know I can just go down the road and go to a shop and buy it. And... But uh, I'll make an exception for you, Pussy Monster. And we might be able to fulfill one, if not two, of those uh, requests for an interview. Stay tuned. Dominic, thank you. La Resistance made their WWE debut 20 years ago. Wow. Will there be a La Resistance reunion, Renee? Sly and Rob later this year, perhaps? Yeah. Yeah. I think we are VNs debuted April of this year. And we debuted on TV, I believe, like May. May of, uh, that's when we attacked Scott Steiner. Yeah. May of 2003. 20 years, man. God. How old were you, Jonah? Five? Four. I was waiting for that. Four years oh, old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea, Dominic. Um, we might definitely. Uh, Try to put, I talk to Sly all the time and we'll try to get Rob on here. Did you contact Rob, Jonah? I didn't. James, did you? Oh, uh, James? Yeah, Rob, uh, he got back to me before New, uh, New Year. He said we'll try, uh, we'll get something started at New Year. So uh, I'll message him tomorrow and uh, I'll get it done. Yeah. So, yeah I always I do. I want to have the three of us blood and eroded. Thank you for the donation. Thank you so much. Uh, are we all caught up? We are. Okay, well, blooded, blooded and eroded sounds like Jonah's sex life. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> blooded and eroded. What's that supposed to mean? Why are you making? Listen, out of all three of us, he's the better looking guy, and he's younger, so he's probably getting more. Definitely more than me. Wait, it's not all about looks. Obviously, right. I've seen what your wife up here like. too, like, James. How the hell is that? <laughs> right, the show. Right. Okay. Um, do we have any announcements for our, we're gonna we got our stream on Monday? Jonah's at Raw, so he's gonna be uh live streaming from the audience in Philly. Are you able to do that or is there restrictions from taking clips and stuff? I mean I could take clips, but I guarantee I wouldn't be able to live stream with the uh connection and stuff. I've tried inside of arenas before, but um I could definitely yeah, I could take clips and everything and send them James way. James, do you think you could pull up the clips? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I can get him in the day after, like, but not that night. I need to get a new laptop. I've got how my about, old laptop. How about, um, how about you take the clips and then are you able to do Wednesday, Jonah? Yeah, um, yeah, I'll be back. We're coming back Tuesday night. Wednesday should work, yeah. Okay, we'll I can't try do to Wednesday. Some clips and stuff, and then we can air it on, uh, and I, have we made the decision if we're going to make uh, Jason and uh, um, Jason, yeah, J uh, Paul and Jason, a weekly segment, a weekly show? 
Uh, it's a yes from me because I like Paul, I like Jason. So if it's a yes from me, I presume it's a yes from the fans. Jonah, is it a yes from you or are you against it? Are they hogging too Absol much attention? Absolute yes from me. They are some entertaining <laughs> folks. <laughs> Uh, let's ask the fans in the chat if you can say yay or nay real quick before we uh, get off here. We got five more minutes. If you guys want to see Jason and Paul uh, on a week, I have so much fun talking with those guys. Like, you know, if I'm down, I just listen to those two guys talk and it makes me laugh. Yeah. We just need to work on Paul's connections issues. <laughs> work on Paul's connection and also his fucking watch because. This week he was 45 minutes late. No, he was nearly an hour late for this. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Wherever is any other than that? Do we have any other announcements? Uh right. So next Friday we've got the blueprint. Matt Morgan coming returning to the show. Can't wait for that. Yeah. Uh it's been too long. Monday supposed to be me and you streaming. Next Wednesday we'll probably get something sorted out. Uh da -da 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 -da. I've got some good guests lined up, so stay tuned for them. Uh, me and Jonah, we're doing the Rumble next week. Yes. That'll be oh, fun. so you guys are going to do a, a live uh, watch a along? Live stream? Watch along? Yes. Uh, maybe since, okay, I'm looking at everybody is yes, 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 sir, can't wait. Uh, how about we see if we can have uh, Paul and Jason for Monday? Uh, try if you want. Uh, Finally, get that sorted out, uh, which would be great because I was thinking of because um, uh, me and Paul will be doing a recording next week for Cinemax. So, yeah, if I if I know what day we're doing this show, then I can sort out a day for that because uh, we're going to be recording episode two next week. Right. So we haven't decided to watch movie yet, but uh, we're thinking. But first episode's done quite well. And the numbers, so I'm pretty pretty you happy. You guys nearly at a thousand subscribers too after your first uh, show. Uh, we're over six hundred, and we've had nearly a thousand views, and the, it went up Wednesday. So uh, for the yeah. first episode, we're really re well. I'm over the moon. Well, you know yourself, like how long it took us to get to like so many subscribers and like views. So the fact it that nearly, it took us nearly six. Six to seven months to get it to a thousand subscribers. That's when we had Rob Van Damme on, right? For the thousand subscriber, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. A, a big part of the help, obviously, Fan Fleet helped us, you know, yeah, big time. Uh, and you know, I, I say thank you to him, you know, every day, I would imagine. Um, so yeah, the fact that we're doing that much already in episode one, um, really, really happy. So if you haven't checked out Cinemax, everyone, please do so. We were. Our first review was No Retreat, No Surrender this week. Uh, our next episode, I think it's going to be a horror movie. We haven't decided yet. But Wrestle yeah, Massacre. Well, yeah, man, we're waiting for you to come on the show. Give us the rub. I got to watch the movie first. <laughs> I haven't even watched it. Oh, Jonah, are you aware that Renee had a sex scene in this movie? No, I, I saw chats about it uh, th when uh, Chris was on. I'm curious what I missed on Wednesday. It sounded like a wild time. It was the sex, <laughs> sex scene. <laughs> It's actually, uh, if we do that, I'll actually talk in the detail how that went. But that was my first scene for my first movie ever was, and she was completely naked too. Yeah. So, so you know how wrestlers will break down a match like blow by blow? Renee's going to yeah. break down these sex scenes? 100%. That would be great. Spot 100%. by spot. <laughs> uh, you go on a Raw too. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a sick show. Life of the go. Do Where me you a favor, sitting? man. Bring a cafe to Renee's sign. And uh, help us promote the uh, the channel. And uh, yeah, starting next uh, next week, we're going to go live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We're going to bring it up, and we're also looking for a female co-host. So if you got any ideas, suggestions, please let us know. If there's any female wrestlers watching who would be interested, boom, but the search is on. Okay, guys, is everything? It's like, Amer it's, it's like American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Cafe <laughs> Day Renee Idol. <laughs> Who would be the next co host? The Cafe Day Renee. There we go. Yes. Blazes. Blazes in the chat. Audition, Blaze. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And uh, it is a paying gig. So, yes, it is a way to make money. Okay. Are we all set? You guys, you, you guys are getting paid? 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll see you guys on Monday, possibly with Jason and Paul. Stay tuned and good night. Bonsoir. <laughs>